I don't know how to eat this. If you're in Cuenca, whatever this restaurant's called, with this view and get this food, bellissimo. If you're new here, we're Jordan and Emily. We're currently traveling around our second country in South America, Ecuador, and have somehow been here for five weeks already. We started in the capital city of Quito. They can't all be winners. Sometimes we find places you shouldn't go. Spent three days hiking the Kilatoa Trail. I can't believe we did it. I feel like my body is starting to give up now. And in our last video, spent five amazing nights exploring the Amazon. Eating bugs in the Amazon. <laughs> now, we're in Cuenca and about to explore the beautiful city in our favorite Way. Good morning from the very popular city of Cuenca. If you don't know where or what that is, it is the third largest city in Ecuador and sits about 450 k's south of Quito. And it's super old. Before we dive into the food, I want to give you a really quick history lesson because it's pretty cool. This town was originally settled before the Spanish Empire got here, but also before the Incans. Really old. Originally, it was settled by the local Canari people and they called it Guampandaleg. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it translated to land as big as heaven or something along those lines. Eventually, the Incans came and overruled them and they changed the name to something that means the door of the puma. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's this. <laughs> the Incans settled the town with the ambition to create it as big as their capital in Cusco. And stories kind of went around the world that it was pretty big, there was heaps of gold here and heaps of treasure. But when the Spanish did actually arrive in the 1500s, they'd all but deserted the town. So now it's filled with colonial architecture and cobblestone streets, so much so that the entire Centro Historica or the Central Historic District is considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But I'm hungry, let's go get food. roughly planned out like the dishes we want to try but it is also the Ecuadorian National Day so there are flags everywhere there's a chance shops aren't gonna be open so we're kind of gonna roll with the punches today and just whatever happens happens whatever we eat we eat so long as it is Ecuadorian food we're happy because I can't help myself I made a little list for today of the dishes we want to try in no particular order there's a couple of snacky things a breakfast thing a couple of desserts which I'm looking forward to I really have no idea how today is going to go because it is Independence Day. Apparently they don't celebrate heaps here, it's more in Quito that they tend to, so we're hoping we shouldn't have a problem. The first place we're gonna go, Casitas, is just down the road, but they don't open till 12, I think because it's a public holiday. So instead, we've come to Aroma de Cafe. They do have what we want, and that is called Motepillo. It looks pretty breakfasty, but it's dried corn that's been peeled and like boiled until it's soft. It usually comes with coffee and some cheese. We're gonna try and get the full meal here and the full experience. Should be pretty good breakfast. Not gonna lie, the temptation to just get Trigio again is really high because we are obsessed with that breakfast. But we thought it's a food tour day, so we have to try some new things. Hopefully it's just as good. I did not expect there to be sausage on top, but very pleasant surprise. It looks kind of trigrio y like what we've had a few times and we've loved, but there's definitely bits I don't understand. We also got a juice which looks like a malt beer. <laughs> what in the world? I have no idea what type of juice that is at all. And we got coffee, but it's cafe tin tinte. Tinto. Cafe tinto, which means it doesn't have any milk in it. The cafe smells good. Tastes good. It's good, it's different. It's like tagio but with corn in it. They look like almost nuts. I don't know, it's just different. It's not bad. You wanna try some? Imagine scrambled eggs with corn. And that's what this tastes like. <laughs> I really don't know how else to describe it. It's nice, but it's scrambled eggs and corn. <laughs> that is ringing a bell. I don't know what fruit it is, but it seems familiar. 
What's that orange cross tomato fruit? That's what it tastes like. Dish number one crossed off for the day. It was good, but if you only have one breakfast for some reason in Ecuador, I'd recommend to Grillo instead. Final thoughts on the Montepillo, I think. Like Emily said, if you only have one breakfast to get in Ecuador, Tegrio is going to be the one you want to get. But if you have two, try that next. The next food we want to get can be found in a few different places, so we're going to try our luck in the main square. We're gonna go eat it in the square because it's prettier there. All I know about a humita is that it's made from corn and I think it's like steamed in some sort of banana leaf or something similar to that. Hmm. I don't know how to eat this, but I think you fold the leaf down, maybe. That is really good. It's kind of like in the best way possible, uncooked banana bread batter. That's like maybe just slightly been cooked, but it's quite under, so it's a bit runny still. That's what it tastes like. There's giant guinea pigs. That is definitely the winner today. I can see myself ordering that many times in the future. And we've already seen the next thing on the list that we want to get. It is a dessert, so we were going to save it for later. But I feel like the fact we've seen it is a sign that we should eat dessert now. <laughs> Man, it's all happening around the church here. It's like everything is sold here and all the people are here. It's got a really good friendly vibe to it though. It's so weird because you expect it to be heavy like ice cream, but it's cream or meringue or something. We've been seeing these since we got to Ecuador and at first we thought it was just massive tubs of ice cream, but it didn't really compute because it wasn't melting. <laughs> now we understand. It's kind of like a meringue whipped creamy ice cream adjacent thing. I don't actually know what this is called. The vendor has like two massive tubs of the different flavors. He asked if we wanted mixed and I said yes, that way we get to try both. He also put some like, I think shredded coconut sprinkles and maybe some strawberry syrup on top. It seems a super popular sweet treat to get. We have seen them everywhere. And what, it was 50 cents? I think he took. <laughs> I just held money out and he took what he needed. Mm, really good though. It's like a super sweet meringue adjacent whipped cream. What a cool little treat. I guess I'll finish this one and you can probably, you're not hungry probably. <laughs> Literally the only weight is the cone. Feels like I'm holding an empty cone. Sprinkles on top's a nice touch. Whoa. <laughs> it feels like you could have five of these and not be full. It's like air. Anyway, on to our next food. I think this is the hardiest of all the foods we're having. It's probably considered lunch the most out of all the ones and Emily's really excited. I don't know what restaurant this is but they have the best view so I'm just gonna hope they have something on our list. Not only did we find a really gorgeous place to have what we're considering lunch 
but I think we may have found the actual way to get up to the church tower. It's not actually inside the church as you would expect. Although I might be speaking too early, I don't know. For now, we're ordering something called the locro de papas, which is like a potato soup. This one's actually locro de papas cuencano. I don't know how that's different, but I'm assuming it's like the Cuenca vibe. We'll find out. Hola. <laughs> a little bonus for the food tour. We are full on obsessed with this sparkling water. I'm pretty sure it's Ecuadorian and I'm also pretty sure that it's natural somehow. Like the sparkles and the bubbles are natural. It's delicious. one bowl and we have two. I don't know if the waitress is that good that she's split it into two smaller bowls, which I wouldn't be surprised. She's quite nice, but maybe we've accidentally ordered two. <laughs> it's so bright yellow. It looks like it's just a bowl of melted nacho cheese. It looks like we get a slice of avocado, some onions, and maybe some extra cheese on top. I don't know. It looks good. It smells amazing. Wow. Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> soup is very popular in Ecuador. Our guide in the Amazon said if he doesn't get a soup with his meal, he doesn't count it. Like it doesn't count as a meal if it doesn't come with soup beforehand. And this one is divine. It's just like super soft cooked mashed potatoes covered in cheese. Does it get better than that? No. This might be the winner. This is top. I can see why you like that. That's got that immediate like potato. I don't know how to say it, like wholesome me, feeling, warming. Comforting. Comforting, yeah. Thanks for getting all my adjectives. <laughs> it's like the kind of winter's day sort of soup. Nice and thick. It's delicious. I think this is top of my list as well. It's my, so might be the best thing we've had. If you're in Cuenca, whatever this restaurant's called, <laughs> with this view, and get this food. Bellissimo. That was the best thing so far today. And like, it's quite high above the others, so I don't know if it's gonna be beaten. It's very filling though because it's like a bowl of creamy, delicious potatoes covered in cheese. And the avocado, surprisingly, I didn't know how that was going to go, but it like cuts through the richness perfectly. I really liked it. I knew our waitress was a winner. She did just separate the one soup into two bowls. What a little legend. Isn't that so nice? It's the little things in life. I am loving Cuenca, Ecuador so far. It is beautiful here and it is such a different vibe to the rest of Ecuador. I'm just really enjoying my day and the food's been amazing. Win, win, win. Hundred fifty spiral stairs to the top. platforms up here so you get this amazing view of Cuenca. Oh 150 steps was a lot. Apparently this church isn't even finished. Oh. So it doesn't have any bells which I guess is quite weird for a church. Because mm. these were meant to have massive towers on top that house the bells. Oh well. Wow. How cool is that? I Never completed. That. Yeah, I'm scared up here. <laughs> Two bucks each. I think it's worth it. Worth checking out. So apparently there's some old ruins somewhere here in Cuenca, but we've decided to stop by the river because we passed a little cafe 
that serves one of our desserts. And I didn't know if we would find this one. This one was sort of on the list as like a Hail Mary because everywhere you Googled, you couldn't find someone that served it. So we saw the sign and we had to stop. So it's called Dolce de Higo and from what I understand, it's a fig that's been like drowned in syrup. You just drive them. It's like pure sugar. Pure sugar. And we couldn't get just one, so we had to get one full tub. Taste that. That's just the syrup. It's like golden syrup and Christmas yeah. mixed into one. This can't be how you eat them. I'm glad we have a few more nights in Cuenca that we can slowly go through this because that is so sickly sweet. It's really nice, it's just really rich and really sweet. Like if you give a kid this, they're gonna go ballistic for hours. Or in my case, a 30 year old gorgeous man. <laughs> it's genuinely so sweet that one singular fig I think we could share and it would be enough. Wow. Save the rest for later. Mm. From here, we've got a few hundred meters along the river to get to some ancient ruins. So that ruin, I actually didn't know we were gonna pass that, but that was found in the 70s and apparently shows the differences between the Canari people and then the Incas came and built on top of them. So there's two different levels and two different civilizations there. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty confused. This place is part ancient ruin, part museum, part garden, and part zoo. There's a macaw. I'm not a vet. I'm not even that big of a bird guy, but these cages look way too small and all the birds look unwell. I don't know whether they're brought here because they're unwell and they're kind of rehabilitated here or if it's the captivity that's making them look like that, but. I thought this was just Inca ruins. I didn't realize they also had this. Hmm, really small cages. The answer to a question I had forgotten about, we saw these guys on a hike in Mindo and had no idea what they were. Turns out it's a bearded guan. It might be because we just came out of the Amazon and being around people who are so passionate about conservation and the birds flying so free, but that's really upset me. Maybe they have to be confined because they have some disease. I don't think that's the case, but... I don't think so. Bit of a bummer. Yeah. I'm gonna go eat my sorrows. <laughs> that museum has honestly left a sour taste in my mouth. I don't, like, I'm not even that hungry anymore. It's completely derailed this video. Seeing animals treated like that, it's just not Okay. And that's why we're gonna donate 10% of the f whatever we make from this video to some conservation thing. This Ecuadorian food tour has gone so well today, we just picked up two more things on our list. To finish our Ecuadorian food tour, we have two pastries, one of which is called oreja, I think. It translates to ear. Does it look like my ear? Yeah. Kind of more like a love heart. We got it from this really nice bakery we saw as we were walking down here. And the guy was so sweet and it smelt insane in there. I wish this was smell of it and it was that good. This kind of looks like a puff pastry with a bunch of sugar on it. It is like puff pastry with a bunch of sugar on it. I think maybe there was a sugar syrup or something that's hardened. Quite nice. Be nice with a cup of coffee in the morning. Kind of tastes like wheat bix back home, lathered in sugar. <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm getting like the dry wheat bix crunch from it. I don't even know if this one's right. Mm. The final one I can't pronounce, and I'm also not sure if this is actually what we were going for, but the name translates to a thousand leaves, and it does look like there's a bit of layers. It sounded really dry too. I think it's the wrong thing, but it's good. It's almost like a meringue base. Some like syrup or something, and then puff pastry on top. Just a nice sugary dessert. Because <laughs> it does look like it's got the layers, but pretty sure this isn't the thousand leaves thing we were trying to get. 
Oh. <laughs> it is tasty, but I think... I don't know if it's supposed to be this way, but most of the pastries we've had in Ecuador have been really dry. I don't think that's really for me, but it's not bad. That's the end of our Ecuador food tour. Tried some good things. I really like that soup. That soup oh. with the view. Ooh. That's got to be number one. Then Hamidas. Mm -hmm. Then the whipped cream ice cream. Yep. Then the breakfast thing. Then the breakfast thing. Then the pastries. Yeah. yeah. And it goes the ear one and the not thousand leaves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's my rankings. <laughs> I didn't realize I knew that. The next time you see us, we'll actually be catching an overnight bus from here in Cuenca to a new country. Peru! Motorbike, my motorbike boy. Supposedly, this. I don't even remember what it is. Corn. Corn. How does one cut this? We're gonna have to use the coffee spoon, is that okay? I guess so. <laughs> is that the angle people want? <laughs> this one? Yeah. We think. That better have been it. You <laughs> This one actually has quan quan. Actually, this one's actually. Loco de Papas Cuenco? No? Cuenco. Loco de... Thanks for the lesson, Mr. Dahas. I have a question. <laughs> That's my child voice. Can we go get food? <laughs>